You cannot get bigger crowds than this on Mont Ventoux. I don't know how we're holding them all here. Goodness knows where their cars are. We're up inside five kilometres from the summit. Luis Leon Sanchez, this is about the third group on the road right now with Van der Velde there as well. The battle between Astelosta and Le Mervel split by one second overall for ninth and tenth. Uh, but we're waiting for the arrival of Pelazzotti up with the leaders. Well, picking up the riders, that's uh, Daniele Righi, who was in the early morning break of 16 riders. The race situation uh, now just two leaders chased by Franco Pelazzotti at a minute and 32 seconds. Jürgen Vandenbroek of Belgium there has seen the opportunity of maybe getting himself a stage victory, but they're looking for a further 30 seconds, and he's riding away from the yellow jersey group. There is a lot of infighting in that yellow jersey group. They're all watching each other, all trying to defend the position at the start of the day. Again, no reason to chase uh, Van den Broek. Uh, this is the battle here. And the longer it takes before they split it up, the less likely it is to change the overall classification. That means it'll be in favour of Lance Armstrong. Wiggins started the day 15 seconds behind uh, Lance Armstrong. He needs to get 16 seconds to go over him five kilometers to the summit this very select group the top men in the tour de france are climbing mont Ventoux in front of an enormous crowd and they're climbing it together these are the two men who still lead this man is coming fast and flying towards them franco bellazzotti no he certainly is he's uh, almost to uh, half the gap there down to a minute and 20 seconds on the two leaders he's ridden very sensibly over these last couple of days whenever he felt that uh, he, he wasn't going to get himself of any more points he sat up and conserved as much energy as possible i saw that yesterday when he sat up on the slopes of the climb towards the top and he just rode down towards the finish line lost himself four or five minutes didn't care about that at all because he has no position in the overall classification and for him this is a very serious move the face of Lance Armstrong, who's come back to the Tour de France after a four-year retirement. He's still riding as good as the best riders in the world. Next year, I think he'll be back to try and win this race again. He tried this time, but he wasn't quite race fit enough, I don't think. Well, Andreas Cloden is setting the tempo just in front of Lance Armstrong. There's a big confusion in front of them there because all of the motorbikes are being shouted at by the race referee. Get out of the way, they're telling them. And they need to because attack. this is setting up an attack for Schleck. Attack to the cars for Andy Schleck, so they better pull away quickly. Brother Frank this time has hooked up to the train. This is it. This is the one, all or nothing, as he paces his brother away. Now Lance Armstrong, Bradley Wiggins has got to react. Well, on this wheel there is Alberto Contador, Andreas Clover has gone. gone out of the back, but Armstrong was on the wheel of Alberto Contador, and I think he's clawed his way back into this group. There know. is uh, Christophe Riblon slipping backwards, and Armstrong is right now on there. the wheel of Contador and on the wheel of Frank Schleck. Thank oh you dear. very much. Schleck looks over his shoulder, Roy smile, they've jumped right into the slipstream of the train, and now the pace will slow again. Bradley Wiggins has never climbed like this in his life. Armstrong has, but he shows now four years on he can still climb like this looking over his shoulder frank cannot believe that armstrong has responded he probably can't believe that so too has bradley wiggins because if he can get rid of bradley Look wiggins this acceleration was taking Frightened. advantage phil of the motorbikes that were just in front they were accusing alberto contador the other day of uh, taking advantage of the motorbike it's the bike riders uh, a possibility to use the motorbikes it's the motorbikes responsibility to get out of the way of the race well, that group with the yellow jersey is around about 4.1 kilometers from the summit. The leaders themselves are 3.3 kilometers now from the summit, and here they are, and they are very, very tired. Pelazzotti is coming, but he's not got them yet. Garati and Tony Martin, the heroes of a full day in the lead. Yes, there were 16 at one stage. These are the last two, and they're just counting the meters to the summit of the Vontu. And here he comes, the polka dot king of the mountains Franco Pelazzotti is trying to run them down in sight of the flag and how perfect would that be if the king of the mountains at the Tour de France comes away with a victory on top of one of the most fabled mountains of the Tour de France again Andy Schleck says right I'm going to test you boys one more time Frank sitting on his wheel comfortably there waiting for the acceleration Armstrong moving onto the wheel of Frank Schleck Alberto Contador sitting behind him and Bradley Wiggins calm as he wants to be just sitting there watching all of these accelerations and staying there to hold on to his fourth place overall.
We're looking at five very proud athletes here who will not concede literally a single second on this climb. They're racing to the summit. The finishing line awaits them there. Seconds really do count. Oh, boy. Did we catch well Alberto Contador Grimace then? I think there might have been a slight grimace, but I think we can give him uh, permission to do that, especially on the slopes of this climb as he sits there in fourth position. It's a horrendous <laughs> oh. sight when you look up to the sky there, Phil, because you can see how far it is to go. Well, Frank Schleck, uh, if he did have a bad start to the climb, it looks as though Bradley's uh, unhitched here. He's just cracked, and he's cracked it around three kilometres from the summit. And now he's got to be very careful here because uh, Andreas Cloden, I think, is also behind. So Wigand is holding on to his fourth place at the moment. Uh, but Frank Schleck could be claiming it because he's only 23 seconds behind Wiggins for the fourth place. And that is why Andy will continue to pace his brother now if they can get 24 seconds ahead of Bradley Wiggins they will have Frank Schleck into fourth well Wiggins has come back he's come back there Phil he knew what was happening to him he just felt that he had to recover there he dug really deep he could feel his fourth place sipping, slipping away then all of a sudden he found that little bit extra to ride back onto the wheel of these guys and you know they may not have realized he'd unhitched here he's gone for the shortest way around the corner that's a wise move and uh, and looking straight across at him uh, and him and Andy Schleck, so he's seen he's still there. He just keeps up the tempo. Back into the slipstream, Bradley. Stay there. Well, he can stay there, Phil, because it's a headwind for these riders at about 27 kilometres an hour, so the best place to be is sitting in that line of riders. I think that's quite fortunate for Bradley Wiggins. A moment of uh, mis miscommunication maybe with him, and now all of a sudden he was off the back, recovered, puts himself back into fourth place overall. Franco Pelizzotti is looking up to the finish, but it's still two and a half kilometres away. Can Franco catch up or should we start to dream with the two boys up front? A re nearly race-long breakaway and victory at the end of the day. Pelazotti was going good. He looks a bit tired now. Here's the tempo here being stamped out by a brilliant Andy Schleck. He's the younger, by the way, of the brothers. Armstrong, so familiar with that style of his, just out of the saddle. Eases up on the back wheel of Frank Schleck. He decided at the start of the day, wherever Frank went, Lance Armstrong would follow well Armstrong had that fixed in his mind I would say this morning Phil at the team meeting that I will go wherever Frank Schleck goes Bradley Wiggins is pulling himself inside out here trying to stay at the top end of this race he started as you said Phil with ambitions of maybe getting inside of the top 20 then he started to nurture ambitions of maybe getting inside of the top 10 now he's hoping to stay in fourth place overall and that's a phenomenal performance by a man who's got an incredible pedigree coming back from the track and he's just easing off the back here just uh, close your eyes Bradley and accelerate if you can you are so close to the top of the mountain the leaders have two kilometers to go now 61 seconds is the gap Lance Armstrong won the 2003 tour by 61 seconds we're now looking here at Armstrong sitting on the back wheel of Frank Schleck he only has to hold him to finish third tomorrow in the Tour de France Nibali is still there he sits seventh uh, Wiggins is losing ground he's gonna have to come back here otherwise Frank Schleck might be dragged to it by his brother to get third place or uh, fourth place in the tour. Well, Wiggins has pulled He's back himself again. back. He's on and off this group, Phil. He is riding with sheer courage this afternoon. He realizes how important it is to stay in contact with this group. Frank Schleck looks over his shoulder again and says, well, I don't know. I can't understand why we can't get rid of that Brit. Well, he's tenacious, isn't he? Well, Bradley Wiggins uh, suffered for just a four minutes and 15 seconds to win Olympic gold medals. But now he's had to struggle for an hour through all kinds of pain but he's learned to do that in this year's Tour de France and he's risen through the ashes and he's hanging on and this man knows he's hurting everybody but all he wants to do is get his brother out of this group and up the road that's what they started their ambition of the day was but they're not going to really have very much chance to gap anyone I think here Phil with this very strong 25 mile an hour headwind all of the guys behind uh, they're getting the advantage it's quite rare to get the advantage of slipstreaming on the slopes of a climb like this but when you've got a block headwind at yeah. 40 kilometers an hour it is an advantage to sit behind the guy in front of you